Morrigan. Where is this place? It's as though my mind has been clouded by a thousand ravens and my feet traversed a million mountains. My tractor, where are you? And the demon? Is he no more? Oh, Seraph, what are you airing? That you have wielded your celestial rule to renew me with life and revive my spirit? Then let me go back in time. Back to where our story truly began. My name is Nodens, and I'm the god of hunting on my isles. One day, when I was traveling in the forest of Banager, I caught a glimpse of some nearby deer. However, they were not the only beings that caught my attention. A white wolf was nearing our mutual prey, when a few mortals entered my canvas. I was swift to spawn a whirlwind of arrows and dismay the humans. Yet when I kneeled down beside the brute, it had already seen the unholy end of a poison arrow. With my healing powers, I made haste to aid my new companion, who in turn told me her name, Dryocta.
knew instantly that she was of an otherworldly nature by dint of her uncommon color. She told me that she could with me partake in the creation of visions, allowing me a peek into my destiny, and perhaps later the end of my eternity. For many full moons she was my lucky charm, and I was her distinguished overseer. The souls of the woods flocked around her as if she was Abnoba herself. It was only later on that I learned that she not only attracted other animals, but also beasts. Feeling blessed about our newly baptized kinship, I went out hunting with her some more, yet I soon discovered how weary she grew of my efforts to annex meat from deer and other animals in the forest. In fact, she treasured no better luxury than to survey my peaceful landscape and the swans on the pond with meditative demeanor. Gathering carrots for the wild horses was also something she glorified in. In truth, it was obvious to me that the act of slaying was deemed time-worn as opposed to the deed of loving by her. Gad, now I recall the soaring wall of Nanto Sulta, she of Winding River and Sundrens Valley. I vividly remember how the free thinkers tried to turn her image into that of a Daruga Dua, yet were taken by my mother's Anu's elite horde of the Tuatha de Danan. Now, how many deer have I heeded so far?
Never. 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 Truly. The mortal of my lands, too, recognized Dryocta's clemency and noted how she exerted her prophecy to reveal when the weather was changing. If the sun performed the next day, she would be elated for her omen. If the skies ere long would open with the tears of my clan, she would hide in a hollow, and all the mortals considered that amazing. I, on the other hand, believed her to be a benediction regardless. But one day, as in all good tales, something happened. I had only assembled all of the earthlings for a celebratory cave bear hunt when we encountered the mountain dragon League Napaste in the forest. Legend had it, it was invulnerable. My wolf, however, snuck over to the sleeping giant to investigate. And it vanished, as if struck by magic. All the men roared with laughter again. Still, Dryocta howled as if something was horribly amiss. Yet the men would not give heed to her elegy and charged at the bear cave as men do. The air, though, felt as if it had been corrupted by something sinister. Four berserkers aimed their arrows at something in the blackness. The leader drew the captured Cleave Salish. 
I had bestowed upon him and ventured forth with valor. Soon a cry from him was read. When my fraction arrived, we witnessed them. Two werewolves, who had massacred the cave bears and devoured them like cats versus mice. Nevertheless, a light in their eyes persuaded me they had protected their human acumen. Hope, drowned in sorrow. All of a sudden, Dryocta gifted them a small number of novel flowers, and thus they were remade as men once again. Transformed villagers looked around in a craze for a few minutes, puzzled and momentarily distorted. Once they realized they were human again, they embraced each other as if they had made it to Anwin itself. They were a bit abashed by Dracta though, and I did not understand that. It's perfectly sensible to be afraid of the dark, but light, typical of whites to be misread merit. Normally men are cursed to roam as foul miscreations of divine punishment because they need to atone for their wickedness. But these men were certainly as respectable as Gofanon himself, who crafted my silver hand after my initial was sliced off by the dragons I imprisoned beneath Gwyneth. They stated that they had once been farm in the land, and that was the only thing they relived. They didn't know how they got to be in this place, let alone who or what brought them here. But in my heart, 
I had a feeling. The next week, Dryoxer summoned a dire precursor, a demon by the name of Krom Kruach and his band of werewolves. The Lenach Falad were dishonoring a small village into human sacrifice as he wanted the magic possessed by my vats. I saw the blood of the innocent slither through the cracks of the land beneath them. I could not bear the sights of my own disciples butchered. Krom Kruach was one of the last diabolical forces left in my sphere. And if he and his underlings were not silenced, it could mean the end of these regions forevermore. As my normally thunderous bow of Gandiver would not be enough to exile this arch fiend, I turned to the druidess, Magruith, a master of theoranthropy, who told me to wait for her by the river of Owenrich at midnight, and so I did, with Draktar and my preferred paladins under the aura of the stars and the stoicism of the moonlight. When I arrived, I eyed the most harrowing of scenes, seemingly Honest men, clenching black witch flowers to their hearts and drinking from the waters which had emerged with the dark colour of obsidian. I covered a crank to lower this bridge. Why this was dethroned? Or is this just a chimera? I cannot seem to animate this anamnesis.
splendid. So where are you, Triactor? What transpired here at this forsaken site? Mark soon appeared with her ancient incarnations, seeking to banish the twilight and hail the sun, thereby stopping the warped pietism. But alas, she was not the only one there. Krom Kruach and the Banshee Goddess, Cleodha, broke Mug's glamour and my saintly endowment with their primordial force, and with one rapid hex, the Banshee sent Mug flying into the dark waters. And thus, she was lost. Blackguards, may the gates of Tirnanu never open to you. The werewolves were too many for my soldiers and Dryoxia and her flowers, so we fled. What is happening? I sense sorcery beyond my bent. Bellissima, is this your domain? The Sinach here is indeed akin to your inner fire. I thank you for reflecting the sortilege and diverting me to this sown shrine away from that malignant murk. How do I retreat back to my hunt after this? most welcome of respites. Oh, you desire my service to marry the light of the moon with that of the sun? Accepted. Now, where are the candles? Water. Air. Earth. Fire. Ether. Now, please let these flambeaux abate naturally, as I need not tell you what will befall the seafarers if you do not. Present my finest regards to my father. I met a Taoist master once. He revealed to me that while he had devoted five years to the strife of reaching my isles in the hopes of finding his daughter, he had taught himself my language. Moreover, 
In his own realm, he'd been worshipped for his philosophy, but seeing as his lands fell into moral decay, he soon elected to journey westward. I was childless, so I was unskilled in the discussion of his lineage. He did not know, of course, of the true nature of these barbaric hamlets, before he arrived. Our cultural disparities were soon beheld when he was bedeviled quite heavily by some warriors. At one particular time, he was reportedly surrounded by three heroes who did not want to be converted by his guidance. But when he came by and identified only him, I asked him where they were. He professed that they were now in a greater place, far, far away beyond these shores. As a sign of good faith, I blessed him with the ring of Alund the Fortunate to cloak him with the fifth fiarder, a mist of invisibility. In return, he heralded that if I looked for a white angel in the forest of Banager, I would secure sanctity. He then assured me he would spend the next five years attempting to uncover his anima anew. We parted to the tunes of the Elysian evening songs until the village ballader's voice gently faded. We searched for her for many moons, but apparently she was no more. Seraph, so many flowers, she sacrificed, reawaken me, I wish to retrace my trail, one last time. We dashed up the mountain of Boch Lane as fast as we possibly could. Our adventure was coming to an end. I felt it like fire fading from a feast. Looking back, I saw the Lake Nach Feilad sees both warrior and wolf, an angel and a demon reside in all men, even gods, including me. But what truly is of value is which side we feed our innermost wishes and allegiance to. Would the wolf venerate viability in the wilderness, whether willing without worriment? Yet I vow that she wavers betwixt our vocation and her withdrawal.
Seraph, is that you? Yes. Now I recall the event that befell my peak. Malgrueth returned as a deer and had apparently first assumed the form of a salmon to withstand the river. She conjured thunderstorms to perplex our defarmers and even turned some of the werewolves to stone. Yet, it was Dryocta who bequeathed my world the ultimate sacrifice. She put twelve of her flowers down on the ground and began to choir the most comely of songs. Strange. I suddenly sense an abrupt yen to reminisce about the ceremony I in like manner as my heroine, harvesting twelve flowers and resting them on one of the blood-soaked amphorous the zealots had hauled up the cracks.